show on Starbucks Nation TV. It's the Kitty Gang Show on Cigarbox Nation TV. And we're coming to you live from CB Getty. It's the Giddy Gang Show. Giddy Gang Show. 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 It's the Giddy Gang Show on Cigar Box Nation TV. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another Giddy Gang Show. I believe somewhere in the vicinity of the 171st. Giddy Gang Show, if you can believe that. I'd like to welcome you, all of you, on this Friday. Those of you joining us on Facebook, our intrepid viewers on YouTube, we are glad you are here. I have a few announcements. I would like to welcome Harry Yeager to the beginning of a Giddy Gang Show. Apparently he rarely makes it for the beginning. Damon Park out there. Yeah, his kid has, Damon Park, his uh, kid has no school today. No so school today. He's able to join us. Yeah, my, my boy is around here somewhere. Um, he did have school. Anyway, uh, Shane Spiel out there just received an exciting prototype. A uh, new flavor of one of our very popular kits that we're excited to see him put together and get some good... I do not recommend you lick the kits. Don't lick the kits. What? You said new flavor. I was... <laughs> Don't you. lick the kits, people. Anyway. I was going to say, has somebody <laughs> done this before, actually? I see my brother out there, my little brother, Mike Crawford. Good to see you, buddy. Got a song... Um, a new song I wrote this week that's dedicated to my brother. Uh, I'm going to be singing a little bit about our old hometown there. Uh, Max Wiedenhaft, I just saw your name pop up. Happy birthday out there, buddy. He just received one of our G-Bass kits. He got a G-Bass. We've got one around here somewhere. Um, anyway, he's going to be putting it together. Excited to see how that goes. Louis Lamana out there. Dano Schultz. Hey. Dano, I haven't seen you for a while, buddy. Glad to, glad you're out there. Um, any of you who have been paying attention uh, know that yesterday was, of course, April 1st day, but it was also the official end of our Musical Mutants contest, Builders contest. Uh, a month, month and a half ago, uh, we challenged you to create a mutant, basically. Combine things into a musical instrument that perhaps had never been combined before, and certainly were never intended to be combined. And the entries for the contest got off to a little bit of a slow start. Shane got worried there for a while. He thought, you know, the contest is going to be a dud. I'm like, give it time. This one's a little bit different. It's going to take a little more time for people to create uh, what they were going to create. And by God, We've seen some interesting things. There's been some amazing <laughs> entries. Um, uh, really excited. We're going to, of course, be featuring and showing those off in the days ahead and then announcing the winners. Somehow we have to narrow it down and choose winners for this contest uh, to receive a $1,000 in CB Giddy prizes. So that's exciting. May I take a moment to say hello to people on YouTube? Yes. We got Portis, Kale. Hey! Kale's out there. Uh, Steve's Strings, who I'm not quite sure. I, I, I'm not, I've seen him out there. Greg Tiffany and our buddy Gary DeRosiers. Hey! How are uh, you all? Speaking of uh, Kale, we had a nice chat with him via remote video session earlier as testing a test connection for next week's show. He's going to be our live remote guest next week. And we just briefly ran through what we might talk about. Turns out we probably have more than one show's worth. <laughs> He's like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get in for 30, and then we talk for five minutes. Let's make it longer. 45. <laughs> solid 45. That's my I'll final give you offer. A topic. <laughs> Kale from Pornis and Cigar Box Nation TV. So it's quite possible <laughs> that uh, <laughs> Kale, will be over. Kale will be a remote guest for more than one show. Hey, Steve Whittle out there, Jimbo Burt, Sue Messias, we're glad all of you are here with us today. All right. Um, 
I, I already ran through all my announcements. Didn't even mean to. Oh, one more announcement. In addition to the cool kit uh, prototype that Shane has, there's another cool kit fixing to be released, but we can't release any, either of those until the exciting new thing immediately on the docket gets released. Early next week, uh, we have a big announcement. I'll just give you a little teaser. It has to do with our Giddy Buckers, our very popular line of surface mount flat pickups that Marty Tauber has been uh, just industriously winding like a madman for the past year or so. Some big news in regards to that. So very happy we're going to be talking more about that next week. So stay tuned. Good stuff. Hold on to your butts. Hold on to your onions, people. <laughs> Put up in your feet, folks. Um, so without further ado, we have a, uh, the first half of today's show is going to be video heavy. Once we get through me blabbing away here. Um, Second half of the show is going to be music heavy uh, because our intrepid producer, the, the chapeaued wonder there, uh, has to leave here in about 30 minutes. Turns out I got the day wrong for my to last go, shot. Go get some things done. So the actual thoughts today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to run these videos uh, starting with this one from our buddy Steve, Steve Callis, uh, sitting on a beach somewhere warm and tropical. I'm going to guess Florida. Found his own Cali Fest, I believe it was. He That's was California? Yeah, I believe oh. so. Well, yeah, all right, good. Um, playing a hobo fiddle, playing some sublime on a hobo fiddle. So here you go. We'll be back. There's a steel train coming through. I would take it if I could And I would not lie to you Because Sunday morning soon will come When things would be much easier to say From the microphone like a boss DJ But I won't walk up upon the sea like it was driving Boss DJ nothing but a man no trouble, no fuss, I know why It's so nice Wanna hear the same song twice It's so nice Wanna hear the same song twice The rumors are bang all over my tongue The just stones and sticks on the microphone is where I've got to get my fix Let the loving take a hold of me Cause it will if you let it Funky, not a junkie But I know where to get it No trouble, no fuss I know why It's so nice Wanna hear the same song twice It's so nice Wanna hear the same song twice Ooh wee girl, ooh wee girl, ooh wee girl, ooh wee girl And there really ain't no time to waste Really ain't no time to pay Haven't got no time to waste Time to pay but Really ain't no time to let the time go away Yeah, so Mr. DJ don't stop the music I wanna know Are oh, you feeling the same way too? Wanna rock it with you, girl Ooh, girl You, girl Ooh, girl uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't stop Cause it's so nice Wanna hear the same song twice It's so nice Wanna hear the same song twice Nowadays the songs on the radio All drive me crazy Don't stop, don't stop Don't stop, don't stop, girl 
don't stop, don't stop. Don't stop, don't stop because it's so nice. <laughs> Well, I'd like to thank Steve for sending that in, and I can honestly say it's the first time I've ever seen a sunset through a windswept beard, so mm. a lot of firsts. <laughs> but it's nice hearing that hobo fiddle played out there on the West Coast, one of them California beaches. Um, so this next video we have from you, uh, I believe he posted it on the Friends of Giddy group. Our good buddy William Edward White uh, recently built a couple of tenor ukuleles from some punch boxes, and he went, he made specific note uh, that these punch boxes, of course, they're made from MDF. Uh, I think the bottoms are plywood, but the tops and sides are pressed hardboard uh, MDF. And he was surprised by how good they sound. Now we've got a, an image here. Here it is. A couple of nice four-string tenor ukes there with those. Uh, what are they, like English market selection boxes, I can't remember, after dinner, whatever they are. We've uh, used a good few of those boxes here, in fact, and it is, it, it brings up the point again. I know a lot of people worry about, is a cigar box good enough? Is it going to have good enough sound? Is it the right kind of, you know, there's a lot of leeway there. You can get really good, surprisingly good sound out of boxes that might be smaller, than you'd prefer, that aren't necessarily made out of what you'd prefer. Turns out, pretty much everything has a song in it if you choose to coax it out, and it'll have a uh, tone. So, um, he sent us a video. I just want to say the fretboards are made from old maple yardsticks at a 17 inch scale, poplar scarf jointed headstocks, a 7 8 inch oak broom handle through the box. He doesn't have a picture. Maybe he'll show it in the video in the back to show that broomstick going through the box. Both use Giddy hardware tuned to low G C E A. After the Easter break they're headed to the children's music program at his local community arts center. So that's cool and I want to point out uh, when he says low G C A on a ukulele, we just happen to have a tenor uke here, uh, the traditional tuning has a high G here at the bottom, uh, what would be the low string. Well, he tuned his to a low, an octave lower, uh, which is an interesting way to, to do it. Kind of opens up the melodic capabilities of the instrument more, as opposed to being a strumming instrument. But anyway, here's the video from William Edward White, a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back. Trying to find what key it was in. I think that was D minor. 
maybe. Yeah. So thank you, uh, William, for sending that in. Sounds great. You're right. Those uh, MDF punch boxes have great sound to them. I like it. I like it. And yeah, Dano pointed out that lower tuning, giving you that that low G for the strumming. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka. Yeah. All right. So next we have for you a video from our buddy Kale, the aforementioned Kale of Porna Studios. Uh, sent us one. He's playing a tenor banjo. Uh, he talked to us a little bit about this tenor banjo earlier and how Louis Lamana helped uh, advise him on getting it set up. I'm sure we'll be hearing more about it and seeing it next week when Kale's the uh, live remote guest on our show. But for now, here he is playing it and playing Love is a Rose. Love is a Rose. Happy Sunday morning, folks. It's been quite a while since I've done an outdoor performance for you, so I decided to get outside with the uh, tenor banjo today. And this particular song has a long history. This song was originally written and recorded by Neil Young in 1974 for an album called Homegrown, but the album was not released. So the record company wanted to get some of the money back, so they took this particular song, gave it to Linda Ronstadt in 1975. She recorded it, had a number five hit on the country charts with it. It broke into the top 100 on the Billboard charts, but not the top 40, but it was a pretty good size hit for her. And then uh, finally in 1977, Neil Young released the song on the Decade album after Linda Ronstadt already had her hit with it. Fast forward to 2008 and Lisa Loeb did a cover of it that got some limited radio play. Um, I'm sure numerous people covered it in between there as well. And then finally, last year in 2020, the record company finally released Homegrown so we can finally hear that song 46 years after it was recorded. But here's my version this morning on the tenor banjo. This is Love is a Rose. here the background of Kale's video there. We were like, is that a train? We determined it was not a train. But then we got <laughs> to talking about trains. So thank you, Kale, for sending that video. Uh, I agree with Nick and Philip there. Can't wait until next week when he's a live guest here on the show. So if you remember uh, several weeks back, we ran a couple of videos from Shane, him showing off his Rezo Electric prod uh, project. Uh, he just, we just put the final installment of his blog series onto the cbgiddy.com uh, blog page uh, where he basically takes it all back apart and walks through how to set it up for the most comfortable playing. Because uh, Shane is a big uh, advocate for not having stuff. He calls it the cheese grater effect. Having screw heads and sound hole covers, stuff that sticks up into the strumming area that if you're really wailing on it uh, can, you know, grind up your fingers a little bit. So we have how many videos? 
three? Three. Three videos. They're, they're each, they range in length, but parts two, three, and four here of him fitting the neck into the box, uh, working on the headstock, and then the final assembly and setup and details. So what we want to do now is run all three right in a row, because there's no point in me babbling in between. Uh, this will take about 20 minutes or so, and then Nick has to cut out and we'll get to the music section. Uh, Danny's got a new, brand new song that he wrote. He's gonna trot out. I've got a new one. I'm gonna trot out, and then uh, we're gonna get Mrs. Giddy. Dawn's gonna come in and lead us in a sea shanty. So, yeah, buddy, here is a whole lot of Shane, and we'll be back with you in a little bit. a cool little feature about the uh, mounting rings for the CB Giddy hubcaps. I'm sitting here building this new guitar and when Ben Baker designed these he put the screw holes at 12, 6, 3, and 9 uh, and then in between as well. But that gives me the perfect place to once I figure out where I want this hole to be this actually becomes a nice little template and I'm able to line up the screw hole with my line up and down and the screw holes with my lines going through the center of the box so just a nice little added feature and I'm gonna be uh, drawing out the circle cutting it out and starting on building this guitar Okay, here's where I'm at now. I figured out exactly where the box top needs to go for this guitar. And the cool thing is the lines I did for the center of the circle line up perfectly with the pencil line that Giddy put on there for this pre-fretted neck. So in order to make it work, I need to take out some of this fretboard here. I first cut down and now I did some chiseling. Now I don't want to go any deeper, so I'm going to pull out my Dremel. I'm going to just use a lot of really um, careful tools <laughs> to keep from going either into the good fretboard or into here of the neck through. Um, so yeah, these are some of the things you need to do as you're preparing these necks. Okay, here I am doing more problem solving, and I really wanted to bring you guys in on this entire process. And some of you more experienced woodworking guys are probably going to laugh at me, but, you know, I'm just a folk instrument builder, which means I ain't that smart. <laughs> um, I was originally thinking, okay, I put, I cut out the notches for the lid, and I put it on here. Now I know that once this cone goes on, and this goes on here, uh, where's my ruler? There it is. I'm going to have to worry about string height. I mean, that's real high right there. Suppose this ruler was a string, and it was going to whatever the nut is going to be. That's really high. So what I need to do is this box needs or the neck needs to be shaved down so that the box sits deeper into the neck. Um, so I need to do that first. Once that's done, then I need to figure out how much deeper this cone needs to be into the neck. So, sorry for shaky camera angles, but I'm kind of perplexed, and I'm just taking this step by step. So let's see where this goes. All right, I need to clear out the wood in this CB Giddy neck. I need to go down, uh, I'd say about a quarter inch here. And the way I'm doing it is with one of these. This is a Forstner bit. This just digs right into the wood and, and clears it. I've got one in here right now. 
what I did was I set my drill to only go down that quarter of an inch that I need and it stops there so I have a nice uniform pull. I'm going to show you how I'm doing this. I put the neck in here. And it just clears away the wood that I don't need in these little circles. Now, obviously I'm using it with this giddy neck, but you can use this even if you're planning just a basic cigar box guitar and you need to get rid of the wood where the box goes, you can use a Forstner bit as well. In some of my other instructions, I showed how to use a dado blade on the table saw. Well, this is actually a safer way of doing it and uh, a lot more accessible to you guys. So a nice little Forstner bit and get your drill press so that it only goes down far enough to take away that wood, which when the box goes through, It'll fit perfectly down in there. There you go. Okay, now that I used the Forstner bit to dig down and fit this box in, I marked where this resonator is going to go, and it goes deeper than the cigar box. So what I had to do was, again, use the Forstner and dig down even more to fit that reso cone. What I may do, I'm looking at, let me set this here. And by the way, guys, I love this thing. This is just a digital caliper from Harbor Freight. I use this all the time. Now, looking at this, this neck now has uh, less than half an inch thickness. And there's going to be four strings doing string tension um, and the last thing I want this thing to do is bow right here is to bow up so what I may do is take a piece of scrap wood and glue it underneath right where the box is and that will strengthen the neck um, because I've learned if you dig down too much in a neck through cigar box guitar and there's not enough support here, that wood will bow. Even something solid as white oak like this is. All right, uh, let's see. First of all, I took a piece of red oak, little thin piece of red oak, and glued it to the underside of the neck where it goes through the box. That will strengthen it because I had to chunk down a lot of the wood in order to fit the hubcap. I put another piece of wood there just to strengthen it. Okay, here comes a pretty exciting part of building a cigar box guitar, especially with this oak neck from CB Giddy. It comes with a paddle headstock. And the reason it's shaped like this is they've let enough wood on it so that you can shape your headstock however you want. For mine, I've got this grand piano scroll that's going to go at the top right here and with two little scrolls here. Um, my design was inspired by a photograph of an old bluesman named Ishman Bracey, and he was holding a, it was like a Sears guitar, that type of acoustic guitar, but it had that type of headstock. I wish I knew the name of the guitar company off the top of my head, because I love old cheap guitars so much, but I can't remember right now. But this is the shape I'm going with, and I'm going to have Two tuners on this side, two tuners on that side. Now, I have a nice vise here. I invested in a vise and install it on my workbench. And I have the guitar in there. I made sure to wrap it in some cardboard to protect those frets in the fretboard. And I'm just going to take this old-fashioned 
saw, hand saw, and I am going to just cut most of the design. I'm going to go a little bit over. And once I'm done, I can then go to my belt sander and even my spindle sander and uh, just freshen up the edges there. So that's what's next. I can't wait to see this when it's done. Quick entry here. Uh, got an idea for this headstock. Headstock came out beautiful. Let me put it back against a different backdrop. Okay. Uh, since I'm building this guitar out of CB Giddy parts, um, I took this. He sells these fretboard underlays for the 2x4 lap steels. And they're made from old or from vintage style drum wrap. And the idea is I'm taking a piece of it and I'm going to glue it to the headstock. And once it's glued, then I'm going to trim it. And so it'll have a classic like old Regal guitars look to it on the headstock, this perloid cover. Um, so I'm going to attempt to use this Gorilla Glue spray adhesive, and what I, I'm hoping that it works. I'm hoping it doesn't start to chip off. But there we go. That's my next step. And here's the headstock. I applied the drum wrap to it. I put the spray adhesive on it, and then a nice big flat piece of scrap wood clamped down, and I'm gonna let that go for two hours. Hey guys, it's Shane Spiel, and here's part four of the Rezo Electro project. In this, you're only going to see my hands because I'm going to put the guitar on my workbench and open it up and show you all the final details that I went through to build this guitar. Okay, for you cigar box guitar builders that really aren't players, if you don't play a lot, um, here's something you may not think of. As you're building now I'm working on this this cigar box guitar with all giddy parts and I've added his license plate it's a mini license plate printed on wood um, as a pick guard and his cover for the resonator now one of the things that I'm looking at as I'm building this is when I play this I'm gonna be in my picking hand and Picking hand will be like this, and it'll be strumming up and down. And one of the things that happens in some cigar box guitars I've had is that these edges and these screws start to just become a cheese grater to my knuckles as I'm playing. So as I'm building this, I made sure I sanded down the edges here, the edges here, uh, I also took this Dremel bit and I'm drilling into these holes to countersink the screws so that my knuckles aren't getting cut on those screws as well. So think about the ergonomics of your body as you're building it because if you have someone that strums really hard the way I do, uh, you could really mess up their fingers. So, just a tip. I mean, this is what I'm doing for my own guitar, and I figured I'd show it to you guys in, in case you never thought of this. All right? Thanks. This is where I'm going to show you the final parts and pieces that I went with to build this, and I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse inside the guts, how I put it all together. Um, as with this project, I did not film myself doing the final assembly. So, as you see, I did choose the Blackbird Pies Rezo Cone cover. 
and I had some old walnut stain left from a house project and I used that stain on here and then I rubbed it pretty good with steel wool to age it. Now the reason I went with that is we have Paduke. We have Paduke here. There's a lighter wood here for the cigar box. It's a little bit darker on the side. So all these different wood colors become almost like a quilt patchwork. Uh, then mixing that with the CB Giddy license plate pick guard uh, just added to the whole patchwork idea and just kind of I liked the look of many different wood colors. So that's why I went with this walnut stain that I had. Uh, as I showed in previous parts of the blog, the neck goes the whole way through. I put an additional piece of red oak right here to strengthen the neck. The um, juke shack pickup is glued in. I had notched the neck right here and put the juke shack pickup in. I did not remove the tab that comes with the pickup. I just let it go. It's, it's not hurting to just be where it's at. And so I used this E6000 glue that I got at Hobby Lobby. And that stuff glues anything. And that pickup is glued in right there. Okay, let's close. The, oh, and it's just hardwired to the jack. There's no volume knob on this. I didn't want to worry about electronics in concert. I usually just go up to the amp anyway and uh, change the settings on the amp or on my pedal board. Let's go over to the headstock. And... One thing I did not cover in the previous blogs is what I used for a nut. And for this particular guitar, instead of making my own nut, whether with a, a CB Giddy wood or bone blank material, I had an old plastic nut from another guitar. And I simply cut it down to size. I liked where the string spacing was. And so I just went with a conventional guitar nut. And I had to sand it down. Let me see if I turn it like this. I had to sand it down a little at the bottom to get it to the exact string height that I wanted. And a couple of these strings were still a little high. So I used files to get in there to get the string height nice and low. Right where I wanted it. This is not going to be a slide guitar for me. This is going to be for... Uh, fretted picking. Additional assembly uh, details were uh, the tailpiece here. I had to bend myself and I trimmed it. Now this wasn't a giddy tailpiece. Somebody had sent me this. One of my fans was hand cutting his own tailpieces for a while and years ago sent me one of these and I had it in my drawer so I figured I'd use it. Uh, and so I had to bend it and hand er, and cut the bottom with my Dremel to trim it up. Then I strung the whole thing up. Right now, my biggest concern is getting proper intonation. And I have had to, let me get a close up here. I have had to turn this bridge a little bit like this to get proper intonation to get that high string to ring out correctly. But that's pretty much it. I used little tuner screws to secure the box to the neck and it's glued in as well. I will eventually close the box for good and I may have a little hole in the back in case I ever need to get to the wire. But I will want to close this box and glue it up or use some other <sighs> system other than the original clasp. So there we go. There's the Rezo Electro Project. I hope you were inspired by it. Hope you got some new building ideas. And stay tuned to cbgiddy.com slash news for more blogs coming up from yours truly on other guitars I've built, including <laughs> the Giddy Bucker guitar. We're going to be talking about the new Giddy Bucker pickups that are about to be released 
and uh, the cool guitar that I made to go with it. So a lot more coming your way. My name is Shane Spiel. You can learn more about me at shanespiel.com. Thanks for watching. Well, thanks to Shane for putting all of that together. Uh, he worked he, really hard on that build, and a lot of great stuff came out of it. Um, so we're glad you're still with us. So uh, we're just about to the point where our Nick has to dash in front of the camera. Uh, and mm -hmm. on stage now, we have, for the first time ever, <laughs> the Singing Bakers. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife Dawn here and son Kieran. Uh, she started working on learning this song a few weeks ago after it became a viral sensation on TikTok. This is the song that kind of launched the, the current uh, craze or whatever you want to call it TikTok. for sea shanties on TikTok. Um, all right, Nick, does. good luck. There he goes. It was a drive by nicking. Um, hey, oh. <laughs> um, and this is the song uh, on the Giddy group uh, this week. Uh, somebody asked if there was tab for it, so I posted the tab for it. Um, anyway, enough talking. Don's going to lead us in this song, and Giddy Jr. here is going to help with the choruses. Mm -hmm. Danny Woodman over here off camera is going to throw his voice into the mix, so, and I'm not going to go too fast. <laughs> So that song, The Wellerman, brief history lesson, mm -hmm. down in, in where the whaling was done. The whale ships, of course, that's what the song's about. They'd be out there for a long time, months and months, 18 months. Uh, 
and the Wellermen were the ships owned by the Weller brothers, or the Wellermen brothers, who would go around and deliver supplies to these remote whaling outposts uh, down in Tasmania and Van Diemen's Land, all over the place. Mm -hmm. So for those guys out there working for years, you know, that it was a big deal to have somebody come and deliver a few basic necessities to them. So that's what that song's about. Sugar, tea, and rum. All right, so we're uh, going to send you on homeward. Thank you for joining in. And we're going to get Danny back up here hey. for a couple of originals. Hey guys. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Doing great. Oh, I don't think the phone came in today. Oh, well. Um, so, uh, this song that I wrote, I just wrote it this week. It kind of came to me. Uh, it's about my hometown, Marblehead, Ohio. And uh, it's about things that no longer exist. And any of you who, you know, are either still live in your hometowns or, or return to them on occasion, you know, for me, it's been 20 years since I moved away from Ohio and visiting once a year or every couple of years you know you kind of get these snapshots and suddenly something isn't there anymore that used to be there so this song uh, dedicated to my brother Mike who I think is still out there and also to old Dave Coran uh, they being the ones who introduced me we used to run around in the quarry the mostly the abandoned parts of the quarries there in Marblehead, Ohio, giant limestone quarry. And uh, yeah, this song's about the engine house that they tore down for no particular good reason in, I think it was 95. Mike could, Mike knows if he's still out there. Remind me what year they, exact year they tore it down. Actually, when I was in high school, I wrote a book, a little book about the history of that town and the quarries and the railroad and such. I had to look in my own book to remember when this engine house was built. <laughs>
that past don't matter anyway to the people in the suits who call the shots far away. torn down, depot torn down, hauled away, and for what? For nothing. Make another corner of a parking lot. Ugh. Anyway, you'll have that. Yeah. Danny, why don't you take this thing and All right. give us a little something there, my God. Well, this is a little bit of a work in progress. Ah, it sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't forget the creek so, over there. April is Autism Awareness Month. And I wrote this song specifically for this purpose, and I was thinking about what would I have done had I grown up in a less interesting time with my issues, which I technically did, but had I grown up in, like, further back, oh, in the steam yeah. era. Is hmm? the, uh, where's the tuner? <laughs> oh, I've, I've drifted a wee bit. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I tuned up the ukulele for no particular reason. So anyway, that's what inspired this song, was, uh, because a lot of... It turns out a lot of people on the autism spectrum love trains. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I know, like, there's a child that lives down to an eight-year-old that's uh, big into him. He's on the spectrum, and I'm going to be giving him a bunch of my old HOs. I don't know what my know. excuse is. But <laughs> yeah. That. So, ah, anyway. Glad you liked it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, here we go. What's the name of this one? This is called Steam Trains Never Lie. All right. And it's about a guy who is, he's living back in the day and he's undiagnosed. And they're going to put him away because back then that's what they did to people. They just, if you were slow, you got put in an institution and they forgot about you. Yeah. So it's, instead of that, he escapes by riding the rails. Come the hobo. Yep. about me that I can't see. They're gonna put me away. I ain't right in my head. Good instinct tells me I'm better off dead. The only joy I've ever found. Watching those steam trains roll up and down. Up and down the line with freight and tow. Across the forest and hills with a clear water flow. Yeah. 
it'll be rough at times, but that's nothing new, cause your heart is strong, and your spirit is too, those steam trains never lie to me, never tell me that I'm all wrong, and if no one's gonna cry for me, then I'm gone, 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 across the wide open country. I tell you, I uh, Nick's going to get his vaccine right now. Uh, you're scheduled. I got mine first one on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to a little bit of getting back to some wide open country, traveling back uh, mm. to that old hometown that I was singing about there. Most last few times I've been back, my my brother and I like to hop in the truck and go driving around to remember where the sites used to be, where things it's more and more where things used to be as opposed to where they still are but yeah reminiscing getting back to getting back to your old home place is a good thing well that uh that's about an hour yep turns out here we are again wasted another perfectly good hour of your friday afternoon we are thankful that you joined us uh always great to see our, our favorite names out there philip taylor saying he was in port clinton in 1969 that was about Eight years before I came around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah tall to me. <laughs> yeah. Barring past lives. Port Clinton in 69. My brother would remember if the old uh, New York Central uh, Depot was still up there. Oh, the, the second depot when they elevated. Anyway, yeah, Port Clinton, I lived there for a few years in my formative days. But anyway, enough of this. Enough of this nostalgic <laughs> nonsense. Uh, We'll see you again next week. Special guest, uh, Kale of Porna Studios. Kale Fellhaver will join us. Uh, we're going to have some of the results, maybe. Shane's got to tell me when we, we pick the winners uh, from the Musical Mutants contest. There's going to be some really cool new products coming down the line, including the, the launch of the second generation Giddy Buckers this coming week. All sorts of good stuff. But for now... different style today. Don't know what that style is yet, but here we go. Well, it's the Giddy Gang Show on Spawn Station TV. I said the Giddy Gang Show on Spawn Station TV. Say it all you need is a stick and a 